Hello and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing my plans for homeschool over the summer. If you are interested in that, I ask that you stick around. So welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, I am a homeschool mom to a soon to be second grader. We love all things books, homeschool, and sharing our journey with you. And if that is something you are interested in, I ask that you hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. So I don't know about you, but I am ready to get to the summer. I am very I've had my mind on summer plans for a while and I just decided to go ahead and get this video out because I thought if I'm thinking about it, you might be thinking about it too. So first, let's take a look at the calendar. All right, so here is the 2021 calendar. And for us, we actually didn't take a spring break because I knew that we were going to have something coming up either in April or May. So we saved our spring break to be able to use during this time. And let me tell you, we were both eager for a break. We haven't taken a decent break since January and we are both looking forward to this time off. And so for May, we are taking our spring break and then a little bit Bit extra. We homeschool year around, so that allows us a lot of flexibility for breaking when we need to and schooling when there's nothing going on. During the summer, I do go down to a much smaller schedule. So in the blocks, I have things that I know we're going to be taking off. And July, I have at least a week and a half, possibly two, that's going to for sure be off as well. That leaves me with schooling the end of May and June. During that time, we will be completing all of our first grade curriculum. We have already completed our science programs. We have already completed our all about reading program. And we would have completed our math, but we had a lot of back and forth trying to make math work for us this year. So even though we did math every school day, we are not finishing the curriculum on schedule, but that's okay. We will be able to finish it in June. So that is my plan is to minimal school during the end of May and into June. So we will be planning to school three days a week at the end of May and through the month of June. Into July, we're going to go even smaller. We may just homeschool two days a week and call it good. So July is really going to pretty much be a month off and then we will start back full time somewhere in August. The first week of August, I know we won't start back full time. So we may start back either the second or the third week of August. And so we will be looking at a three day a week schedule here, two maximum a week here and then for half of the month of August I would say we'll do a two or three schedule possibly two just to kind of finish out our summer with the wonderful weather. I do want to show you what we're planning to use during our summer school. I will say that the only actual curriculum that we are going to be using is our primary mathematics. I do want to continue this because I want to finish this up so that we are starting primary math 2A in August. I want to have this one under our belt and we will definitely be able to get that done on our 3-2 schedule. But this is the only full-blown curriculum that we will be using. We won't necessarily use this every single day, we will do a lot of fun schooling, unschooling, game schooling, but we will be doing math and this will be used the majority of the time for math to be able to complete that up. In addition, I'm going to continue with our story of the world read aloud. We are not using the activity book with this. We used it like the first, maybe second week, and then we just quit using the activity book. Um, we use this 
as the read aloud portion. And then a lot of times we will get out the Us Born history book, which is amazing by the way. We like that almost as much as this, if not better. And so we will use those two, but I don't wanna have to do like a lot of catch up and be like, where were we in this? So this, we will do a ton of reading aloud anyways. And so might as well just include this also. Again, it's not gonna be an everyday thing, but it will probably be like a once a week thing just to kind of keep a freshness in our mind about what we are following along in history. The next thing I'm excited about using this summer is actually something I have had for quite a few years now. This is the Magic School Bus lesson plans and I actually printed all of this off maybe for her pre-K year or kindergarten year, but it just wasn't a good fit for her at that time. It's going to be perfect for this summer. So let me show that to you just a little bit. So this is so fun. We have a lesson that coincides with one of the videos from Magic School Bus. So you watch the video, then you have this little topic and then the little experiment that you get to do. And it's just so fun. It doesn't take hardly any prep on my part, which makes it even better. And then it's just a really, really fun way to get to do a little bit of experimentation and have a little bit of TV time during the summer. So I tried to find this a while back so I could share it with you and it's not available anymore. It used to be rcozyden.com, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I don't know that you can actually find this anymore, but if you can, this is an awesome way to do science over the summer and that is what we are planning to use. To continue on with that, I would like to work on this. I would like to encourage her to use this a little bit more. And this is the girl's doodle book. This is just a really cute little way to add to the drawing and use your imagination on how to add to it. So it's really cute. I would like to encourage her to use this at least once a week. Now we will be doing lots of painting, lots of art projects, different little experiments during the summertime. We wanna fill all that time up with those fun sort of things. So that's why I'm really, really low on the actual curriculum and workbooks that we're going to be using. To go along with science, we have Tinker Active Science First Grade. We have been using this periodically throughout this year and we will continue to finish this up. What's fun about this is at the very, very end, you actually get a badge, a little magnetic badge. So when we're all done, she can pop that out. This has just a few short pages that you work on and then you have this tinker section. Really easy, minimal materials that you have to have. Great, great, great thing to have through the summertime. Now, even though we will be doing primary and math, I like to have fun math. So we're also going to be finishing up our Star Wars workbook. We have been working on this as well. So we do have probably about half of it left to do. We will finish this up. We will also play math seeds. We will play different online math fact games, things like that just to make math fun as well. But we will definitely work on this. Another workbook that we have that we will continue to work through. Again, these won't be used every day. These will kind of be going through a rotation on the days that we do school, but these are all available for us to use. There may be most of the days that we are game schooling in very, very minimal workbook pages. But this one is a great one to continue with. It is 100 write and learn sight word practice pages. And all you do is you open it up, you read the sight word, they trace it, they write the word, and then they write their own sentence. This is a great way to also work on your handwriting a little bit. So this is another one that we will continue through the summer. The last workbook that we have is the Brain Quest workbook. I love to have a big workbook like this going throughout the year. We have already used quite a few pages of this and we should have no problem finishing this up completely. It is a really, really large book and you really get your money's worth on this one, I think. It's just a really, really great workbook and it encompasses all of these subjects right here, which I think is fantastic for summertime to be able to just open it up and use any of these. So this is also another workbook that we will be working on. I mentioned that we completed All About Reading Level 2. 
I do not want to start any of our new curriculum until August. So I am going to have her reading independently. So versus starting the curriculum and then having to take another break and then starting it again and breaking again, I want to wait until August to start all about reading level three. But at least three days a week, I'm going to be having her read independently for a certain amount of time. And I'm going to encourage her to read daily. She does enjoy reading, so I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. I wanted to show you some of the independent readers that I picked up for her to read over the summer. The first one, which you have probably seen before from us, is The Kingdom of Renly. I have a few here. I'm trying to get the whole collection for her. I'm missing just a few, but I picked up quite a bit in one of my latest book hauls. But these are absolute wonderful chapter books to start for your new reader that is ready to go into a chapter book and not one of just the little readers. So these have nice big words on the page. They also have images on almost every single page and the story is fun and entertaining. She really, really enjoys Kingdom of Renly. Currently she has started number three, but she has recently fallen in love with Dogman, which is right here. And so Renly has taken a back seat as she has blown through the first four books of Dogman. We will definitely be picking up number five, but this one is, again, she loves these. It is like a graphic novel style. She, ha like I said, just has been blowing through these, loves them. So we have been borrowing these from the library and I'm sure she will complete the series over the summer because she's already on number four. Two more that I have here, and this is another one that I just recently picked up. This is Magic Ponies. The words are a little bit smaller than like the Kingdom of Renly, but they're still a good size. Like if you were to compare this with like the Magic Treehouse, the Magic Treehouse has a little bit smaller wording. And so this is nice because the words are a little bit bigger, but we still get images on the pages. The last one I want to show you is Heidi Heckelbeck, and this is another great one for that beginning reader. You can see that the words are really quite large, and there's images on all of these as well. This is three books in one, so it's actually three different books in this one large book. I thought that might be a little intimidating for her, but she actually picked it up and did start reading a little bit of it. But like I said, Dogman took over the scene, and so he has taken over every other reading that she was doing at the time. We will definitely be going to the library on a regular basis and getting more books. So even though these are the ones I'm showing you today, there will definitely be more that she's picking up throughout our library visits of the summer. All right, so one of the other things that we are going to be doing a ton of this summer is reading aloud. So I have a few stacks here that I'm going to show you of what we're planning to do is read alouds. The first one here is The Tale of Troy. We read The Odyssey late this year and loved it, absolutely loved it. And when we were looking through the topics here, we saw that there were others that we were really interested in. And then it got to thinking about, we kind of wanted to know the rest of the story, like the pre-story of The Odyssey. And so when I saw this for Puffin Classics, I grabbed this. This one, I don't know how heavy it's going to be, so we may not finish this one during the summer, but we will start it. If it's something that we're really both liking, we will continue it, but this just talks about Odysseus on his way before the whole Odyssey thing, so I think we're going to love this, but it is one that may not get done this summer. The rest of these, I fully intend to read this summer. One that we just started last night, I'll put a picture of it right here, is The Penderwicks. I have heard a lot of things about this one. It's set in the summer, and so I want to try to read quite a few books that are talking about summer. This one has just been talked about in high regard, so I did want to pick this one up, and we actually have it as a digital loan, so that is wonderful, so we are reading it right now. Up next one I'm super excited about is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. I absolutely love the movie The Secret of Nim and 
this will be one where we read the book and then we watch the movie. It is also set in the summer because Miss Frisbee moves her four small children to their summer quarters immediately. And great, great movie. I'm hoping that the book is even better. They usually are. So we will definitely be reading this this summer and it is Miss Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Another one that I picked up quite a while ago, knowing that I had this as a read aloud in my mind, is One Crazy Summer. This is a multiple award winner here, so I anticipate this would be a really good one. It's set in the summer of 1968, and I just think it will be a really good book for us to read over the summer. Carrying on with my summer theme, we have a very small little Nancy Drew clue book. This is number one of a pool party puzzler. She could read this if she wanted to, but I would say this will actually just be a quick read aloud that we do one day during the summer. And the little Nancy Drew books are just cute little mystery books for this age. I would really like to start the Little House on the Prairie series. Before I do that, I thought we could read this shorter book, which is Sarah Plain and Tall. I thought this would kind of introduce us and set the scene for this time frame and just kind of get an idea on how she's feeling about this sort of story before we dive in to The Little House on the Prairie. So this one, again, a Newbery winner. I've heard great things about it, and this is Sarah Plain and Tall. The next two books I have here is the Blue Fairy book, and I actually got the whole series. There's four books. I put it on my Instagram one day. If you're not following me on Instagram, be sure and check us out there because you can kind of see what we're up to when we're not here on YouTube. But these two books here, and this is the classics to read aloud to your children, I would like to read out of these at least once a week. Now, even though I say we are schooling three days a week, I'm going to be reading at least five days a week. So even though we might not be doing anything else, I will be reading aloud to her in some form or fashion five days a week. And so I thought I could add these in along with our read alouds that we have over here. But these are smaller stories that we can just breeze through really quickly. But I thought that would be a great way to just plan on covering one story out of these at least once a week and possibly more. My last one that was really, I don't know, an impulse buy possibly is Peter Pan. And it is an illustrated classic. It's a very large book, as you can see. I do not think she's ever seen Peter Pan. And like I said, this was an impulse buy. I really don't know why I bought it, but it's very pretty. It's illustrated. It's this just nice, big, beautiful book, and I'm a sucker for that. So this will be a fun little book that we can read, totally different than anything that we normally would read, and then we can watch Peter Pan. So not that I want to have like a load of electronic time and TV time during the summer, but it is so fun to read and then do comparisons, and we do that all the time. Our most recent one was The Tale of Despero. But this book and movie could not have been more different. I was shocked and amazed at the difference between that. And so I love getting to have these comparisons with her from reading the book to watching the movie. I did mention that we are going to do a lot of games. So let me just show you what all games we have that we will be playing this summer. All right, so here we are at our games, and I just wanted to show you because I feel like we've got some really good ones that are totally worth their money. The first one that I have, and I love learning resources. You see I have a whole stack of them right here. Love them. This is Buy It Right. This is an absolute wonderful game to practice math, practice your shopping, the money, all of that super fun. Learning resources again, Some Swamp, one of our absolute favorites. This is practicing addition and subtraction. These are also great quality made games also. I love that the pieces feel good and they just don't feel like these cheap janky pieces. Learning resources again, Dino Math Tracks, a place value math game and it's dinosaurs. So she's pretty crazy about dinosaurs right now. So it is a win-win. Bingo, that's just number recognition and fun, so we will play that. 
This one we haven't actually played yet, but we will very soon. This is Guess in 10, The World of Animals. It looks like a fun little animal game. So this is kind of our first science-ish game. So I'm excited about that. Another learning resources is Pop for Addition and Subtraction. This is a great one to take outside because it just it's very small and you just have these little puzzle pieces that look like game balls. Really fun. Some more math games that we have is Cloud Hoppers, which is a subtraction adventure game, and Ocean Raiders, which is addition. This I got as a double set, and we do enjoy playing both of those. I was questionable on their quality, but the boards are nice, just the game pieces are cheesy feeling. <laughs> Race to the Treasure. This is a cooperative game where you work together to take your pieces and complete them as a path and try to beat the ogre. Really easy setup, really, really well made, this one right here. We've had this one since very, very beginning of kindergarten, and it's still in great condition. Then up next, we have Super Genius. This is a reading card game really fun and again it's just a deck of cards so it's easy to get out and play in here we have some addition dominoes let me pull those out for you so we have our addition dominoes here these are so fun this comes in subtraction multiplication division fractions all sorts of stuff i definitely want to add more this usually is sitting in our morning basket and then I also have these Think Fun. This is like a big set of dice. It's a dice game. For language arts, we have two options here. And that is Zingo, which is pretty much a sight word bingo. And we have sight word swat. This is really fun. It comes with little fly swatters. And you try to swat the fly with the sight word on it faster than the rest. And then I also have two of these in addition and subtraction. And they're just right on wipe off cards. And we like to pull these out and have competitions with each other. So these games are so fun. And let me show you two more. I have quite a few, this is actually more than two, but I wanted to show you my two new ones. We have quite a few of these folder games, which are so fun. They originally came from this book here, Reading Games with a Ziggy Zebra, but we save these and we just modify these games to work with our current phonogram and spelling cards. I have two new ones that I just picked up the other day from Instagram, which was in the bio of All About Learning. This one is a pirate ship game. Really fun. We love these folder games, and they're just so easy. This one is actually for spelling, but you can actually use it for the word cards also. If you have like index cards with words that you want to practice on or spelling words that you want to practice. This one is a little hare and tortoise race where you are trying to read the word card. Again, use it as spelling. So, so we play these all the time. We love these folder games and these will definitely be used a lot this summer. All right, as we finish this video up, I do wanna mention that we will be doing out school classes. We won't be doing a lot of them because really this summer is going to be outdoors. We're going to be doing lots of nature. We're gonna be outdoors a lot, but all of this can go outdoors with us. All the games can go outdoors with us, but we will be doing some out school. We will also be continuing on with our apps as far as reading eggs, the night zookeeper, math seeds, and just other games where we're practicing our math facts. So we also will have those things, but this is the bulk of our summer school. Lots and lots of reading, lots and lots of outdoors. I did want to ask for any recommendations for any read aloud books for summertime. So if you have any good ideas for me, please put them down in the comments below. I would love to get some more ideas for good read alouds for the summer, things that are set in the summertime. And if you have any questions about how I'm going to do this exactly, put that down in the comments as well. I would love to help you in any way that I can. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful summer and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.